Now then, welcome back to a Tom FM channel. Uh, apologies, there were no videos the past few days. Uh, there are explanations for every single day. Um, I don't really feel like I have to do an explanation, but it's a bit of a series of unfortunate events, really, that kind of lead to the situation. So it's not been a video since Friday. Uh, Saturday was obviously the first day without a video. Uh, I woke up feeling good, you know, did a workout in the morning. That was really good, enjoyed the workout. Then went to go and stream, and then there were some hardware issues on the stream where it was lagging out loads. And for the rest of the day, like, I was trying to work out these hardware issues. I think it's all sorted out now, but it just annoyed me. It got, it really annoyed me, put me down. So I just couldn't bother to make a video for the rest of that day. So I just sort of binged Amazon Prime for a bit, watching that new Richard Hammond program and Tori Belaici program. It's all right, worth a watch maybe. Sunday though, I woke up feeling a bit rubbish and I thought, right, well, you know, I'm gonna kick myself into a groove. I'm gonna go on a run instead. So I went on a run and thought, right, I'll do 5, 10 K or something like that. Um, ended up doing half a marathon instead. Um, and I was absolutely exhausted at the end of that, as you would imagine. So. I just binged Amazon Prime again, but actually feeling very, very tired instead. Monday, we're gonna get back to recording, but I didn't sleep very well Sunday night. I'd just run a half marathon. You'd think I'd be tired. No, I couldn't get to sleep until gone three o'clock in the morning. Um, had to for work for nine o'clock, so I got barely any sleep. Long day at work then just could not be asked at all to make a video. And then yesterday, Tuesday, uh, I actually did sit down to record a video to make the video. Issue is, uh, my microphone, as you can see just here, I um, I use it as well for work, so it's, it was plugged into my work computer. When I went to actually record on my computer, it was still plugged into my work computer, so there was no audio, it put me in a bad mood, couldn't be asked to redo it, so that's the situation we find ourselves in. So apologies for no videos over the past few days. I've not really communicated it very well, but I've just been annoyed at every sort of little setback that's been over the past few days, but it's fine. We're gonna get back into it and actually enjoy it. Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 3, finally. Welcome back, hope you're all doing well today and uh, looking forward to today's episode. And you join me at a good time actually because it's the very end of the January transfer window. So it has been a few days. Uh, again, apologies for that, but it's just the way it's sort of been. It's been a few days. Let's cast our minds back to last week now essentially and remind ourselves of our time in La Liga. Obviously we got promoted to La Liga, we signed some good players, many of them in on loan but many of them have been recalled back to Betis because Betis pricks basically. It took a long time to get our first win in the division, we got it against Tenerife, we beat Betis as well and we've gone on to beat some other teams. You guys were last here for a dramatic 2-2 draw with Barcelona and then a slightly less dramatic 4-0 loss to Real Madrid. Since then, as you can see, I've played plenty of games to get through to the end of January, the end of a January transfer window and today we're playing against Valencia and Levante. So since you were last here, you can see there is plenty of green, but I should probably preface that by saying plenty of green is plenty of wins in the Copa del Rey. The A-Bar, the Conquista game, and the Logranes game, all Copa del Rey wins. We then lost to Villarreal in the fourth round there, which obviously wasn't so good. However, we have won three games in La Liga since you guys were last here too. So we'll start off with the Espanyol game. That's the first game we played since you guys were last here. A 1-1 draw with them was very, very good. But we travelled to Getafe and got a great 1-0 victory there. In fact, that might be our first, that genuinely was our first clean sheet of the season. It's 1-0 against Getafe, our first clean sheet of the season. So great to actually get that. Great Great win for us there. We then got battered by Athletic Bilbao at our place. So the less said about that one, the better. The next league game was a 2-0 loss to Atletico Madrid away from home. Understandable, of course. But Leganes, we managed to get past them at home, beating them 2-1 with two goals in the second half. Obviously, January, lots of uh, Copa del Rey games in there. But focusing on the La Liga ones, we got a great draw against uh, this team. We got a great draw against Real Sociedad. We had a man sent off in the 37th minute. Uh, Kubo then scored for them in the second half. And then we just managed to hold on and get a goal at the very end of that game. So I remember a few episodes ago when we played against, uh, was it Mallorca? Mallorca, they scored on the 92nd minute after having a man sent off. It was kind of the reverse of that. Unfortunately, we lost 3-1 to Huesca, who are actually having a fantastic season. They're looking to try and get themselves into European football. So we'll look at the table 
in a minute. But we did manage to beat Celta Vigo 2-1 in a quite surprised victory, but a very nice victory nonetheless before we lost to Real Sporting Gijón last time out as well. So as you can see, we are picking up a bit more form in La Liga. It's starting to go well for us. However, we are still in a huge relegation battle. Now, Mallorca and Betis, they're pretty much relegated. You can see that. There are 11 points and 10 points. They are way off the pace. If they catch up and don't get relegated, I'll be very surprised. I think what we're doing really is competing with Gijon, Tenerife, Getafe, even maybe Villarreal for 18th place in the table. We just want to avoid it. Right now we sit on 22 points, one point clear of Getafe. That win against Getafe, very important in that battle there, but it's going to be so, so difficult to stay out of that 18th place in the table. That's our aim this season. And that's what we're going to try and do. Now, to do that, we have signed some players this January. There are two players that have come through the door and one hopefully coming very shortly. My scouts have been ridiculously busy. I've put loads of money into the scouting budget. We've got a few more scouts now. It says nine members there. I don't know why it says nine members because there are only seven members, but we are allowed more scouts. I've signed as many scouts as I can as possible. I've tried to get really good ones in, as you can see as well, with really good judging player ability and potential. For the most part, they are on relatively cheap contracts. If you want a bit more expensive ones because they are very, very good and they're, you know, the better they are, the more expensive they're going to be. But we've got a really good scouting network work now and it's starting to pay dividends. My main priority list has been looking for players 21 and under and ideally trying to find those players who do have low minimum fee release clauses that we can bring into the club for fairly cheap and they've got decent potential on them. As you can see, uh, we've got nowhere near the full list. We've still got another 99 players to scout out on this list. That's how many players I've been trying to scout out. So a lot of these guys might be for next season as well. But we have brought two in, so let me introduce you. So it's these two players down at the bottom, uh, these ones. Now, I will preface this by saying that the stars don't look particularly good for these players, but I think their attributes look really good, and I think the game is undervaluing them. So the first guy we brought in is from Dundalk in Ireland for £350,000, rising to £400,000 with a few add-ons. Demetrio Chensi is his name. He's Irish, but he's not actually Irish. Well, he is Irish, but he was born in Brazil, has got Brazilian nationality, but just plays in Ireland. So I'm a big fan of this guy. It's basically a Brazilian in our squad, so that's always a plus bonus. He is a centre mid. The coaches rate him at two and a half stars of current ability with five star potential, but I think he looks a lot better than that. I'm looking at 14 first touch, 15 passing, 16 technique. Determination is high, decisions are high, anticipation is high. Teamwork could be a little higher. It's 11 right now, but it could be higher. Work rate and vision are very high too. Physicals maybe let him down a little bit, but for me, I'm looking at a really top quality player here with a great personality too. Like, I think the game is undervaluing him. So I was very happy to bring him in. He's like a great player from the scout list. Had had a good season at Dundalk as well. Played for Finn Harps before that too. So always played in Ireland. He's come over to Spain now. And his first three appearances are 6.43. Maybe, maybe say that he's not actually very good. But for me, I look at this. And I really think we've got a bit of a star. We might have to give him a nickname though because Demetrio Chensi is a bit of a mouthful to say. But it's not quite as much of a mouthful to say as our next player, uh, Nikita. That's the easy bit. Razatkin. Which I, it's not that bad saying it out loud now. But again, another young player coming in. A striker, 19 years old. A bit of a replacement for Meeks maybe a little bit down the line. 15 finishing, 14 first touch, 16 technique. Uh, his determination as 15 is very good. Composure and anticipation is very good too. His teamwork vision work rate could be a little bit higher, but he's only 19 years old. And again, physicals will only get better as he gets older as well. He's also from Belarus, so he's got that instant Andre Shitajel connection there. I honestly, I think he's class. And I think the game, again, is undervaluing him by putting him at two and a half stars and five star potential. I genuinely think he is the La Liga player right now looking at that. Not a very good La Liga player, still a lot of time to improve, but La Liga capable nonetheless. He's yet to make an appearance for us. He only just joined the club very recently, so don't expect to see much from him so far. But Nikita and Demetrio, I think are gonna be great players coming into the club. So I'd love to know what you guys think about them. Let me know down in the comments section if you think they are good signings. Now we should have another player joining us very shortly. Uh, a left winger, 
coming in from uh, Rail Oviedo, if I remember correctly. So we should see that come through. As you can see, De Kenne is back on international duty right here. Uh, it's the African Cup of Nations again. That came around quickly, didn't it? So he's currently away, De Kenne on African Cup of Nations duty. Hopefully getting to another final with Mali, that'd be fantastic. I have tried to sign loads of players this January. Uh, we have had contract issues. We've had negotiation of price issues. So I think bringing the two players we brought in right now has been fantastic. And if we can get this other guy coming in, that would be great. We've got more people being scouted out all the time. This 17-year-old fullback from Chelsea, you know, Let's, let's keep scouting him. He could be decent with five-star potential, maybe. But I have really enjoyed this period of just looking for players, trying to find the undervalued gems. And I think we have done. We've brought two players in from Dundalk and Belarus. Like, not many teams are doing that. And I feel like that's where we need to focus our attention. That's how we are going to develop a team that is capable of winning the league someday. By looks of things, uh, on deadline day, he's set to join Martin Ramos for £725,000. It's the biggest lump sum we are paying out for a player ever, actually, at this club. That's the biggest transfer fee we've ever played, played, ever paid for anyone. It is his minimum fee release clause as well, so it's the maximum we could pay. But I think this guy could be a star apparently some clubs want my players to go out on loan you can have him if you want and europe you can have this guy as well if you want to as well uh, we'll look at the b team in a minute because a few people have been asking about the b team although it's nothing really that special now but ramos is here welcome to the club martin great to have you and this guy for me i think is going to be a star his physicals are kind of where he excels right now but could be a little bit faster crossing and dribbling of 11 and 14 at 17 years old is absolutely fantastic again just imagine in five years time how much this guy is going to have developed and be a lot better of a player so martin ramos welcome to the club very happy to have you here made two appearances this season for oviedo in the division below us got a goal seven rating he looks decent i think he is a bit of a future star so martin ramos we love you. And then just to talk briefly about the B team, there's not actually many players in here right now because most of them are in the 19 squad or out on loan. But we are just consistently second in the division. Europa FC are the best by a long way. They're always winning, with, as you can see, they're always winning the title. We always come second. Um, second the past few seasons, we've come third a few times as well. But it's just becoming routine now where... We are the second best team in Gibraltar behind Europa FC. What is quite nice though, Gibraltar National League is jumping up rapidly in the competition reputation, which is great. So obviously, us being in La Liga, us bringing better players to Gibraltar in our B team, forces the other teams to have better players as well. A lot of our players go on loan to teams like Europa and Manchester 62. So we are slowly but surely making Gibraltar a better footballing nation. Maybe not quite the national team yet, but they are sitting at a nearly all-time high of 179th in the rankings, which is fantastic. I should say as well, uh, senior squad. I did try to sign JD Meekin back this January um, because he is having a fantastic time at Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, 13 appearances, 6 goals. I mean, he's having a great time at Bayer Leverkusen in the Bundesliga. Uh, I've tried to sign Joshua back. He doesn't want to come back to us. Um, I also tried to sign... Where is he? It's probably a bit of a sort of like this, isn't it? Anthony Ward. Tried to get him back. Uh, Valencia won't let us have him, despite him not being their first choice keeper. A little bit concerned about that, but we'll try and get Anthony Ward back at some point because he is still insane. So yes, it's all starting to fit nicely into play with Gibraltar and with La Liga. Anyway, I've rambled on too much. Let's get into this game against Valencia. So this is the lineup for today's game against Valencia. Before we talk about the lineup, there's three key players missing for this one. Belista, our left back, currently injured, a bit annoying. Uh, Kahinde is currently suspended and Pascal, our CDM, plays for Valencia. He's a Valencia player, so can't play against them today, unfortunately. So we're missing those three key players, but one key player is back. That is De Kenne. He's been knocked out of the African Cup of Nations in the second knockout round. So not getting to a final this time around, but it's good because we get him back nice and early. So he is going to be leading the line, in, not leading the line. He's going to be the last line of the... You can tell I've not made a video for a few days. De Kenne starts in goal with a back line of Lukau, Munoz, Ingerson and Hannesson to try and make sure Valencia don't score any goals. Robbo comes into the CDM spot to replace Pascal. Sanchez starts as a box-to-box -box midfielder. The new Brazilian Irish Chensi starts in the attacking playmaker role. McLean and Perez keep their positions on the wing. And right now, Gisk on loan from Real Madrid is going to keep playing up front. But we do have our new boy on the bench, 
ready to come on and try and score some goals for us. So as kickoff is upon us here today, it's a game we probably won't end up winning because although we looked at the table earlier on for us down near the bottom end of the table, I didn't really talk much about the top of the table and right now Valencia our top of the table. I think they've only moved into top position in the table because we've just started playing against them so they get an extra point for this one technically so they've gone top of the table on head-to-head -head record instead. But as it stands, they are top of the table still. They've been there all season. So this could be the year that Valencia break the Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, Barcelona trio of triumph at the top of the table because they're the only teams that have won this division since we've started this game file up. I will also apologise because... What I am seeing is my... It looks very weird and glitchy at the moment. I was talking about hardware issues over the weekend and I thought I'd fixed it, but this now looks very bizarre. I'm not quite sure how it's going to look once it's all rendered out uh, and out for you as a video because um, it does look a bit weird on my screen. It should be fine once it's all processed down to like 30 frames a second and you know processed out for YouTube, but there might be a few more things I've got to do on my end to make sure things don't break. Instead, this, uh, I, we've just scored, a, I thought I'd pause the game, because I was, I don't think you can see this, if I do this, you can't see this, I was looking on my, I was trying to see like the frames per second, and the frames per second are all over the place, which is why it's a little bit weird, I think, um, but then we've just, uh, twice now, because I'm looking at frames per second again, you couldn't even see it, Gisk has just scored a goal. 30 minutes in. There you go. Potentially another chance for us now as uh, we got on the ball on the edge of the area again. This time it goes over the bar. I'm getting very distracted because it looks... It looks... I'm looking on OBS. OBS it looks okay. Although I look really out of sync. Oh my god. I think I've just broken everything. This could be a disaster. I don't know. I'll find out when I'm editing if it is a disaster or not. But I... I Maybe some... I don't know. Maybe... Maybe they're just... I've had this PC, how long have I had it now? 18 months or so? Maybe it's time for an upgrade, maybe? that. I mean, I've just bought an Xbox, so ideally, there's the, ideally, I wouldn't want an upgrade right now, but um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, penalty for Valencia by looks of things as well, as um, who's, are they gonna get it? Please no, penalty, you hate to see it. Come on, Dekene, you may have gone out of the African Cup of Nations just now on penalties, but make up for it by saving this one. He, he hasn't. Okay, so as we come towards the end of the first half, it's been a very good first half for us, I must say. I wouldn't expect a score, but for me personally, it's been a very poor first half. I've been distracted. I'm looking at the wrong things. I'm thinking too much about why is this lagging on my screen so much and it's weird, I don't get it. it, says we haven't scored a goal. I'm all over the place, but the team aren't all over the place. 1-1. One, one. That's a pretty decent showing. These are the most important points we're going to pick up all season because these are the games that we should be being absolutely battered and dominated in. But the fact we picked up a draw against Barcelona, we could be getting a draw against Valencia right now. It really does show that, you know, these are very important points that could keep us up towards the end of the season. And if we can, like, get a winner, that would be even better as we're not going to... Oh, we could still... No, we're not going to do it right now because uh, here come Valencia... I'll be honest, I can't really keep up. It's really laggy on my... I might just watch it on OBS instead because OBS seems to be recording it all a lot smoother than it's coming through on my screen here, which is really weird. Um, so I have to sort this out. It looks like Phil Foden is currently playing for Valencia, though. He took the corner there and it goes out for a throw. And so alleviating the danger alleviating the danger there, which is quite nice. The thing is, I'm now watching the game on OBS rather than my actual monitor, but then the camera's there. Like, I'm looking all over... The Basically, this is not going very well at all. Come on, let's. I'll fix things, you know, make it better. But I'm, the game looks really weird and broken. Um, so again, we might just do this Valencia game because I, I'm a bit, I just want to fix the computer. And for what somehow I've been recording for nearly 40 minutes and we've only got through not even a full game yet. So they, I don't know what's going on, lads. You can see how this puts me in a bad mood, though. You know, if, when things just don't work, like they worked, everything worked properly on Thursday. So why is just overnight it all just like stop working, for example? Stuff like, I don't really get it. So I'll spend a bit more time trying to work this stuff out because it's all a little bit weird. But at least you get a video today. 
<laughs> I mean, and that's more than it has been the previous few days as the Kenny makes a double save there, which is fantastic. Five minutes to hold out then. Can we get a famous draw against Valencia? I mean, that's how desperate we are. A famous draw against Valencia. Or in the 90th minute, are they going to get a winner? Because there's a highlight right now with two minutes to go of added time. Surely offside. Surely offside. They miss it anyway, which is very, very lucky for us. But the clock ticks down. There we go. 1-1. If we hadn't given that penalty, that would have been a win. It's one of those fixtures, I suppose. But we will take a point at Valencia. Right. I'm going to go and try and fix all this because... I. Uh, why, why, why me? Why does all, why do bad things happen to good people? Okay, next episode we're gonna come back for I think Seville and maybe Barcelona again. We picked up a draw against Barcelona earlier on in the season. Let's see if we can do it at their place. So thank you ever so much for watching today's episode. If you guys have enjoyed, of course, if you have done, drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye. <laughs>